Hello, welcome to the Friday, October 5th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Honolulu, Hawaii. John Robertson and Michael O'Reilly published an article with Bloomberg's Business Week today that alleges that the Chinese military compromised motherboards from Supermicro by implanting special hardware backdoors. Now, all companies named in the article as being affected, most notably Apple, Amazon, and Supermicro itself, did publish statements denying that anything like this was happening. Now, Apple mentioned, and this was already well known that in 2016 they did have some issues with drivers supplied by Supermicro that turned out to be backdoored but Apple also stated that they never came across a hardware backdoor as described in this article. Now, according to the Bloomberg article, this entire issue was discovered in 2015 when Amazon purchased Elemental Technologies. Elemental Technologies thus produce video streaming servers that made use of Supermicro motherboards. And when Amazon did its due diligence on the company, they came across these back doors. Now, Amazon again states that this was not the case. They did their due diligence here. They found some issues with Supermicro equipment, but according to Amazon, this was more with web portals and the like, and all these issues had been addressed by now. None of the sources that the reporters interviewed for the article are named. They mention that they reviewed some documents, but none of these documents are reproduced as part of the article. The article does show an image of a small chip, sort of the tip of a pencil size. It's actually displayed sort of next to a pencil to sort of make the point. It's however not clear if this image is the actual chip found on the motherboards or if this is just a random component that is used for illustration and to me it actually looks more like the later. But regardless of all of this, uh, what really matters is do you have to worry about it? Uh, do you have to do anything about your super micro servers? Well, uh, this attack, if it actually happened, was a somewhat targeted attack and only very specific customers of super micro would have been affected by it. So unless you see yourself in the crosshairs of the Chinese government, it's probably unlikely that you're going to be affected by this attack. The article by Bloomberg states that they're not aware of any actual intellectual property or data being stolen via this backdoor. Now, the other question, of course, is could something like this go undetected in particular, given that it was used to target some large companies? Well, the answer here is certainly it's possible. It's very difficult to validate the design of a motherboard that you're purchasing and many of these components are typically even only identified by experts by using markings and such on the components themselves. So if these markings are missing, if they're altered, then it's very easy to sort of misidentify a component in particular as small as described in this article. Another option, of course, to detect a component like this is to detect any network traffic being used to control this component. But all of this depends on how chatty the particular component is, how often it checks in with a command control server, or if it actually just sits there and waits for certain inbound traffic. We don't really know enough to really make any guesses here as to how difficult it would be to detect that traffic on the network. I'm teaching the intrusion detection class this week here in Hawaii and you know certainly one of the lessons here is if you are only sending a couple bytes here and there uh, then it's certainly possible to stay below the radar in particular on a large busy network. So in short, don't panic. And what really matters here is defense in depth that you do have diverse and redundant security controls in order to hopefully detect the failure of a control as important as your server's motherboard. In particular, with all the hoopla recently about Meltdown and Spectre, we really should get used to the idea that hardware-based controls can fail either via intentional backdoors or just via design mistakes like we had with these two large flaws. 
But uh, well, let's uh, look back at some of the more normal attacks that we encounter and well, that would be phishing. Yesterday I talked quite a bit about phishing and how, for example, Microsoft's blob storage is being used to host phishing pages. The goal here is to get more plausible TLS certificates. Well, uh, Microsoft isn't alone here. Cloudflare via its IP file system and the IP file system gateway apparently is also hosting a number of phishing pages. The IP file system is a distributed peer-to-peer -peer file system and via a particular HTTPS gateway that's operated by Cloudflare, well, uh, you can point users to files stored within IPFS and these files are served using valid Cloudflare certificates. In particular Cloudflare, just like Amazon and Azure, is tricky to block. Since these networks host a lot of important and valid content and really just blocking IP addresses usually doesn't work if it's hosted within any of these cloud providers. And a public service announcement regarding the root zone key signing key rollover. If your DNS server does validate DNSSEC, please make sure that you are using the new most recent root zone key signing key. This key will be rotated officially come next Thursday on October 11th at 4 p.m. UTC. And by that time, you have to have the most recent key installed. If you fail to do so, then DNSSEC will stop to function and name resolution may cease for a number of important domains. Originally, this rollover was planned for last year, but it was, was pushed back in part because a lot of ISPs hadn't installed the new key yet. If you installed your DNS server within the last year or so, then it probably already came with this new key pre-installed. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.